Hello, everybody, and welcome to, I don't know what episode we're on. What episode are we on? 22. 22. 20, season three, episode 22. Season three, 22 of the Creative Exponent podcast. And today we're going to talk about judging your work fairly. And this is so important because it comes up a lot in art and any, really any creative endeavors. It comes up a lot where we just are completely unfair with ourselves, especially when you're starting something new or when you're just learning. And so, so that's what we're going to talk about today. That's what we're going to talk about. I'm, I'm over here, like rearranging 90 documents so I can still see your face and see our notes. And anyway, I'm distracted. I've I've got that too. I've got a lot of windows open. (laughs) I'm trying to, I want to, so we've had time. We record in GarageBand, which we've shared. If ever you want to know, like, I wonder how they do their podcast. We did a whole episode on that. And yeah. we record in GarageBand, but now we're also recording video on Zoom. And then mm-hmm. we, you know, we have these Google documents that we pull up that has our notes in it and everything. So I think I finally figured out the right. Yeah, the, I got it. The right Tetris, computer. correct. Yeah. <laughs> well, but the issue <laughs> is we need that. to watch our GarageBand recording because there are times when it's like, there's just oh, yeah. some random error and we're talking for 30 minutes and and it's not recording. Yeah. And so, um, anyway, or sometimes I don't turn off the metronome and then there's like tick, 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 tick through the whole thing, which Which feels good. (laughs) And we have to record it again. It just happens anyway. It does. This is a good segue into judging your work fairly, because these are things we've had to learn in doing a podcast. And we really have, we really have had to be gracious with ourselves with certain things, like just everything, learning how to use the mics and learning what kind of software there are millions, not millions, but there are a lot of different kinds of software to use. And, um, and I think we've definitely gotten better at it, but we really had, had to give ourselves a lot of grace when we were first starting out. Yeah. Well, and I think it's, I mean, look, I think even if it's not you starting something new, uh, you have to figure out ways to judge your work fairly, even when you're, you know, you've been established a long time. Um, it's we're, you know, we're our worst critics and we're definitely the most impatient. I think, um, I'm even dealing with that personally right now, like being really hard on myself about some things. And it's so, yeah, I mean, I just think it's one of those, um, it's one of those topics that makes sense. I know you have a, you have a story about judging your work fair, fairly. So <laughs> I'm, I'm looking well, forward to hearing it. <laughs> I have lots of stories about it because I think that I'm, I'm the kind of person. So there are people who approach new things with like, I'm going to be terrible at this. And they just kind right. of, you know, maybe are really harsh with themselves. I tend to approach things, especially things that are kind of like in a world that I've been in before. I tend to approach yeah. it. Like I have a feeling I'll be okay at this. <laughs> like I might, I might do all right. So, I do that too. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. Yeah. So I decided I wanted to play the violin. I've always loved listening to violin. I've always, I think it's a beautiful instrument. And so I went ahead and ordered this violin off of eBay and, um, I mean, total crappy violin, Mm. bottom of the barrel kind of violin. And Um, this is when you were how old? This is when I was probably like 25. Okay. All right. Just getting some context here. 25, 26, something like that. So. I bought the violin and, um, and I bought a CD and a book and everything to learn. And Mm -hmm. I just, as I'm waiting for this, this is before like two day shipping, as I'm waiting for this (laughs) violin to come, I'm having these visions of like, I feel like I'm just going to get it right away. Like I'm just going to pick it up. (laughs) And it's just like that first bow drag is just going to be so beautiful. And it's just beautiful. Wow. I like, if only I had known right. <laughs> sooner. <laughs> so anyway, I had, so I great had this story so far. So then I get my violin and first of all, I have to like set it up, which if for anyone yeah. who plays violin, like there's a bridge that's, that's, um, it's held upright by the tension of the strings. And then yeah. especially with a cheap violin, you have the issue of the tuning peg slip. 
So oh you get it gosh. all nice and tight and in tune. And then it goes like, you know? I'm worn out with it. Just yes. thinking about it. So I'm like <laughs> struggling setting up the style. And this is also a good story and a good example. Like, please give yourself good tools. Cause I was starting right. with this really just, it was oh. like $150 violin, which is yeah. not very much for a violin. <laughs> And, um, so anyway, I'm struggling through setting it up. I'm rosining the bow. I'm trying to get it to the right tension and everything. And then I start to play and it's, yeah, (laughs) it's that horrible, screechy, typical scratching. Yeah. First time playing the violin. And, and I really, you know, and my first thought was, well, I'm just, I'm not going to be good at this. I'm not good at this. And I was really disappointed. (laughs) And it's like, man, how just absolutely unfair is that? Like to right. pull it out of the box and have this expectation yeah. of like really being able to stand there and intuitively play a song. Like that yeah. expectation is so ridiculous. And I think that, totally. so this story is funny and we can laugh about it, but I think a lot of us do that, that we go to, you know, I don't know, a floral design workshop or we go to, yeah. the, we take a class online about painting or drawing. And we just sort of have this idea, like my work is going to look as good as the instructor's work who has yeah. studied it for decades. And, yeah. and then when it doesn't, then we think, oh, well, they're talented and I'm not, they're good. And I'm right. not. And it's like, well, wait, it, that, <laughs> give, give it a minute, a minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> that's like Ava she's man she's that way um I'm, I'm definitely that way too somewhat but I'm learning I'm learning through most of our therapeutic talks you know it's a practice again those things are a choice and practice not like a you're going to arrive at the place where you always judge your work fairly it's just more of a choice and a daily practice to yeah. try to remember to do that but um you know, she, she drew an eye this week, you know, like an actual eye and, um, and I, you know, okay. she's really into an eye, 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 eye. <laughs> right. you, make, you somehow make a three letter word into like three syllables. I, 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 okay. Anyway, I can't even keep doing it, but, um, you know, with, with the shading and all and the reflection in the eyeball and, you know, and she, she just, she hated it, you know, because Mm -hmm. of the lashes. And I'm sitting there looking at it thinking I would, could have never drawn that at 12. Like I never could have, um, I just didn't have that. I, I, now I'm so (laughs) (laughs) self-conscious. Anyway, I just didn't have, you know, at that time in my life, in my head, I was athletic, not creative, you know what I mean? And so it just blows my mind. And the, then how hard she is on herself over like how the eyelashes look, you know? And it's like, sweetheart, that's the very first time you've done this, you know? And Andrew, you know, draws a ton and um, is really, really talented. And he usually has a reference photo or something he's looking at, you know, but still really naturally gifted, but he's practiced a ton. So she looks at his stuff, you know, and his eyeball looks, you know, it does, it looks more professional and finished and, uh, you know, there's just some finesse in it and the shading's less harsh and, you know, she just, it's hers is just crap. And it's like, it's the first time. Yeah. It's the very first time you've done this. I don't understand what it is. And it hits us, I think, at about that age, you know, about puberty, middle school, because like, if you ask a six-year-old, I mean, even our Phoebe is like, I'm the most amazing artist <laughs> on the planet. <laughs> I I can sing, I can dance, I can twirl and I'm amazing. And it's something in that age that just, that insecurities flare up, you know, comparison flares up and it just kind of stops being easy to give yourself a dang break when you start something yeah. new, you know, well, I don't and know. It, and it continues. I think a lot of us carry that yeah. into adulthood. Um, I, I had a, yeah. almost an identical story with someone who took one of my free painting classes online Yeah, and she sent me the picture and was just really like critiquing it and everything and saying like, I just don't 
I just don't think I'm really good at it and everything. And I said, well, how, how many paintings have you done? Mm -hmm. And she, in just that question, she knew right away what I was asking. And she sent like the laughing emoji and she said one. And I'm like, okay, let me, (laughs) let me give you an assignment. Do 100 paintings. And then at that 100th one, then you're allowed to critique it a little bit more. And, (laughs) but right now you're not allowed to critique it because it's your first painting. So I don't think that doesn't mean you like, you need to come with the expectation of being bad. Like you might be, you might find, wow, there's, there's some hidden hidden talent there or something, but I think that you need to come with the mindset of, I'm not going to judge this the same way I would judge something that I've been doing for a long time. So I'm not going to judge it the same way I would my handwriting that I've been doing since I was five years old. I'm not going to judge it the same way that I would other things that I feel very proficient and capable at. And I think that we start to lose that willingness to do things that, that are out of our sphere of proficiency. We Mm -hmm. start to lose that, that willingness and start to, and we've talked about creating those boundaries around yourself and we all do it. Sean and I still do it where we're like, yeah, "Yeah, this is kind of where I'm comfortable. This is where I feel. Yeah talented. This is where I've worked hard to grow and stepping outside of that means I'm going to create work. That's very, um, amateurish and, you know, maybe not going to be bad. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so, you know, when I was younger and I think this is because of sports, I really do. I just got into a place where I did not do things that I could not just, I mean, be amazing at, like Mm -hmm. I wanted to annihilate the competition. And if I couldn't, then I was not going to participate. So while I was okay at volleyball, I would never go out for the team because I was like, "Mm -mm, not doing, not doing mediocre, not learning something new. I mean, down to like which games we would play, like as a family, which ones were fun. I still do it every now and then where I'm like, nope, I'm not good at that. I don't want to do it. (laughs) You know, and that's just so, it's so contrary to what I, what I feel here in my studio space, you know, especially now, um, just having to kind of pivot and keep pivoting and trying new things, new approaches, um, different projects, certainly then like stepping out and painting this last year in a more serious way. Mm -hmm. So it's so funny, you know, I think maybe some of that's just some maturity, like, and recognizing you don't get to be like, you know, you can't feel like an Olympian all the time. Although I was never an Olympian, but in my mind, you know, it was like, I'm totally awesome at that. So yes, I will happily sign up and do that, you know? Um, And sometimes it's good to do things. This is not on our notes, but it's worth saying, you know, things like that. Also being a beginner, it keeps us humble and hungry for learning and for just, kind of that exploration of like, what could I gain from this? What could I, what could I become because I choose to sit down and do something I'm not so great at yet? Or I um, feel, you know, a little unsure about that. That's kind of like that childlike wonder, you know, we can't have that if we're only willing to participate in things that, you know, we are our strongest in. Um, so yeah, it's just interesting how we do that. Well, and I think it's important to note, just like with sports, um, art and creative work, and we've talked about this before, there is this component of a natural aptitude, some ability, definitely when you get into sports, there's like, you're just built for certain things, you know, your height or the, you know, your muscle structure and all of that. Yeah um, can make you predisposed to certain sports, but with, and I think the same thing can be true artistically. People just sort of have this natural draw to colors or Mm -hmm. to patterns and textures or to music or whatever, but all of those things are, are learned. And there are so many stories about 
on both about athletes, about people in the financial world, about yeah. business, about creativity, where people learn how to do something that they never saw themselves right. as being good at. Um, and that, you know, yeah. we love those stories because it's kind of the underdog. It's the well, it's person, real. Yeah. The person who started <laughs> later in life, the person who yeah. maybe, you know, people told them that they weren't going to be good enough. And then they, they worked really, yeah. really hard and took advantage of their natural assets, but then honed the things that needed to be honed and became, yeah. you know, very stellar in their field. So I yeah. think that that's like, I don't think we can say it enough that that same thing is true of yeah. any kind of art or creative endeavor that it, yeah. it all takes practice and study and work. Um, and that's yeah. why there's art school. That's why there's design yeah. school. If it was yeah. like, and either you have it or you don't, classes. then there would be none yeah. of that. Yeah. There'd be none of that. Right. It's like, well, there's no point in taking a class if it's not something you can learn. Yeah. But, but it you can, can be learn. learned. Yeah. Yeah. You can. I, and I, I think, think that's too, important. like, and you, you told me this last year, you know, when I was um, starting to paint a little bit more, you know, you had said like, give yourself a challenge, you know, and, and that it's funny that we're nearing, I guess I did that That's in funny. March. So I'm You're not quite at, at my year mark, but yeah, I'm almost at a hundred. I've got 11 to go and may do that before obviously the full year is up. And so it is interesting at at choosing, there they go. My mom is at the door. Um, it's okay. <laughs> um, anyway, they, oh no, that's what I was saying. I, I've got it now. Um, you know, <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting how now I just know, like I, I do, I have practiced my way into, you know, feeling some trust in what's about to come out of my hands. Mm -hmm. And I can see now, now I'm, you know, I'm so like, uh, you know, I've just got, like we've said before, I'm, you know, entrepreneurially promiscuous. So I'm the same a little bit artistically. <laughs> I get a little like distracted and I'm like, Ooh, spring colored abstracts. That sounds fun. Let me do that today. And then it's like a moody dark sky. So I'm never going to be somebody probably who, always stays in this one tight, yeah. you know, vein. Um, but I do see now consistency in it. And I see sort of a style that's emerged and is emerging. And I know it'll keep doing that. And, you know, that just takes, that takes practice. It takes doing, you know, yeah. for that to happen. Um, and that's not even to say whether it's good or not. It's just, it's more than what it was, you know, yeah. it's more than what it was in the beginning. And often I think so much of the, the creative part, when we apply what we're talking about to that, that's really half the battle, you know, it really, maybe it's 80% because I, I mean, you, I know, and I have both looked around at a millions of different things that are considered art that we just don't get, you know, yeah. it's not our, I mean, we're all that way. We, I mean, some people look at my things and, and feel that way, you know, um, at yours or, at, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, that's just the way it works. You look at it and you're like, I don't get it. It's that's not my, the nature of art. Yeah. It really is yeah. that it's, it's so subjective. Yeah. And so that's the point. It's like, it's really not about whether it's good. It's about, is it yours? And, and have yeah. you given it some time to develop by practicing it and being okay with being a beginner Yes, long enough to just give it a whirl and see where your hands lead you, whatever the medium is, you know, we yeah. may not be painting, but, um, you know, bl blogging, writing, um, you know, photography, all that stuff, you know, any, anything where you're taking your hands and you're, you're doing something with them. It just requires that the practice, you know, yeah. which is why we love that book so much. So anyway, yeah, we actually wrote, we wrote in our notes, a point that we want to make that it's not, your work is not less than because you're a yeah. beginner. It's just different. And actually yeah. there's um, that had kind of come from, um, there's a workout program I was doing and they had different, you know, they always have the variations. They have the person who's going to mm -hmm. go all out and jump all over the place and everything. And right. then they have the person who's, you know, modifying and kind of protecting yeah. the joints and everything, taking yeah. it a little bit, a little bit 
simpler Fuller, and the instructor, yeah. which I really appreciated, kept saying like, she's still working hard. She's still doing, yeah. she's doing her best for what her body is going to do. And, yeah. and it's not less than it's, it's yeah. just, that's her, her level where she's at right now. And I think that that's yeah. important when you're starting that it's like this, this is just, it's not less than this is just where I'm at in the journey. Yes. This is just yeah. where I am. And I, I've, really tried to embrace that as even as yeah. I look at my old work that I'm like, Oh, oh gosh, yeah. I can't believe that's like in somebody's house. Like I've yeah, wanted to just go I already feel that down, way. Totally. Hunt them all yeah. down and burn them. Right. But, but they, you know, they are not less than they're just that oh. that's where I was. That's what I could create at that time with, with what right. I had learned, with what I knew, with what my practice level was. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I think it's really important to not try to use words like good and bad to judge your work, but use, right. wor use words like, okay, well, this is what I learned. This uh -huh. is what I would do differently next time. This yeah. is what this I is like. I about see it. some growth. Yeah. Yep. You know, just, yeah. And just giving yourself a moment to be be brave enough to be a beginner, you know, mm -hmm. it's a brave thing, especially if you're then going to share it, you know, in any way, whether it's like on social media or a, yeah. a website or a blog, or even like at a gallery or at a show or something like that locally, even with your family, it's vulnerable. I mean, you know, so just, it's a brave, brave thing to yeah. begin and focus on, you know, I just have a pull to do this thing. I can't tell you why, but I just have this pull and I want to do it and I'm going to do it. <laughs> and I mean, I don't know. I feel like people have looked at me probably throughout my entire adulthood and thought, when is she going to like not do a new thing, but I not <laughs> probably not ever. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you like reach proficiency not, at doing new things. So that's just, what yes, you keep doing. it's, it's just not my things. style to like, <laughs> I don't know, create this one widget and sell this one widget until I'm dead. It's just not me, you know? Yeah. I can't um, do that so, either. I've got to always, yeah. I mean, there are things that I've done for a long time that I still love doing, yes. but I don't, yeah maybe I don't necessarily want to do them over and over again. Or I think that's one yeah. reason why I really love, I love painting landscapes. I like painting portraits. Yeah. I like painting yeah. still life. I, I like bouncing yeah. around between them because yeah. then I can paint kind of what I'm in the mood for, or I can switch to different right. mediums or mm -hmm. if I don't want to paint that day, I'll work with yarn or I'll work with, yeah. you know, I'll go yeah. do, do a sewing project or I'll work yeah. on writing. I, I love yeah. that. What, the kind of work that we both do kind of yeah. allows for that sort of bouncing around to different, yeah. to different things, but that's not for everybody. Some people, they really no. love like mastery in one thing. They that's love right. that one that's thing. True. They're passionate about it. And that's what they do for their, you know, for their entire, mm -hmm. um, career. And, and that's yeah. fine too. There's not, not a yeah. right or wrong, but the point is, is that when you, and you had just touched on this, that when you focus on mm -hmm. improvement and growth and you focus on practicing regularly in whatever it is, whether it's something new, yeah. something you want to pick up again, that you haven't had the time to do yeah. because of full-time work, raising like, kids, homeschooling, yeah. you know, taking, helping your parents as they're aging, whatever it is. Um, yeah. if you focus on practicing regularly growth, growth is just unavoidable. Like you're not going to do something several times a week and not improve at it. Like it's right. It's just Im impossible. Because really. science, right. <laughs> yeah. Because like, yeah, of science. science. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, that's it. It's going to happen. Yes. You will get better. You know, yeah. it's yeah. You will. And it's, it's so interesting that how and actually, we do that. We had shared about keeping a captain's log. Uh, I think oh, it yeah. was in the last yeah. podcast episode and someone shared with me that they followed that advice and they sat down yeah. and, and wrote a log of the decisions they've made and kind of what the results have been just kind of looking yeah. over the past year or so. And she was so impressed with herself and what yeah. she had accomplished when she was yeah. feeling like she hadn't done very much, but then when she right. really wrote it down and looked over it. So I think that's why it's really important to keep a record of your work. Um, yeah. whether it's by photographing, even if you throw away the stuff after you create it, 
photograph it, yeah. have some kind of record of it so that then you can yeah. see, oh man, it is funny to look back at old sketchbooks. And I'm really tempted to like tear certain pages out. There's like a hand I drew it really, and I even <laughs> knew at the time, out. I'm like, it looks like a Yoda hand. It totally, <laughs> it's like, looks too small. Hands are it's, hard. <laughs> out of hard. proportion. It just looks so bad. But I, you know, I, I had never really focused on it. It was my first hand that I was try yeah. <laughs> trying to draw. Yeah. And, and even just like self portraits, I've done self portraits yeah. for classes and looking at like one that I drew a few years ago versus one I drew like last yeah. year, just seeing how much growth there is in yeah. that looking at like one of yeah. my first portraits as an adult, which man, the girl looked like an, a Disney princess or something. Her eyes were yeah. so enormous. Her proportions were so <laughs> off. And, um, and now, you know, how I'm drawing portraits that really, you know, they look human yeah. and they have yeah. a likeness to the person and it yeah. just, it just all takes practice and you've got to be able to see that growth. And, um, you know, and even now I look at where I'm at now and I know there's still so much growth for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. but this is, this is where I'm at now. This is what I can create now. Right. And, um, I, I think we need to celebrate that and not rush through it too much. Yeah. And that's you know? enough. That's enough for now. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's enough. You don't have to be, um, well, again, it's sort of like we've talked about so many times, there is no really real arrival point, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, maybe you'll win some kind of award or you'll publish a book with your work in it. Um, but there's always the next thing there, you know, there's always the next Monday morning, the next meeting, the next opportunity. So like as cheesy as it may sound and as repetitive as we've shared it, it really is about the process and about sort of the discovery and the journey of creating work, mm -hmm. whatever that work is. Um, and I think that applies to people in a boardroom. I mean, that's the, it, it applies to every, every kind of work, you know, it, it can't just be about, um, the arrival of a place. So yeah. if it can't be about that, because there's not this like point where we just stop and it's like, okay, I've done it all. I have arrived and there's nothing left to learn. There's nothing left to improve upon. Um, then, you know, it takes some pressure off and it, I think it gives us the ability to be brave, you know, and to try, yeah. to try new things and to, to be a beginner and be, um, I don't know, even just to, to be brave and bold enough to pivot and do different things in our businesses or in our lives, you know? Oh, and we've um, we've had so many good guests who have done that. So like Michael yeah. of Inspired by Charm and Emily Lex yeah. of Emily Lex Studios and just, yep. you know, who have, they were doing one thing and then decided, you know, yep. let me, let me try my hand let at just something pivot. else and, and allowing themselves to evolve and change and yeah. taking some risk in order to do that is, um, those are awesome stories and very inspiring. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, yes. I have a creative contraption. We didn't talk about it ahead of time, but oh, okay. it's actually Great. something totally different. It's not a, well, I have more pens and pencils and goodies I can talk about. Um, <laughs> this is actually a class that I'm taking that I think really okay. fits with this. And it's one of the classes on Jean Oliver. Okay. Uh, it's by Amy. I can't think of her last name. I don't know. It starts with a B Amy B. Uh, but anyway, it's on Jean Oliver's um, course and her it's like Butler or Baker or something okay. like that anyway. But the class is called the magpies nest. And okay, I've it's seen that one. totally not like anything I would do. It's like literally making this book that has this feeling of kind of this bird's nest of like, you're yeah. collecting all these little things and doing all these, you know, marks on paper and making these mark making tools out of twine yeah. and soda cans and all this stuff. And, and even as I'm watching it, I'm a little like, cause for those who don't know me, I'm like, I'm tidy. I like to 
you know, I want yeah. like straight edges and well, I don't mind a good deckled edge, but you know what I mean? I like kind of, yeah, you like a stencil. Yes. I like I things gotcha. to be neat yeah. and tidy. And she's just like working in these stacks and dripping on everything and spilling yeah. stuff and burning <laughs> things and That's dripping great. wax all over things. And, and as I'm watching it, I'm just like mesmerized Yeah, <laughs> and like, I'm going to I'm going to do it. So I started foraging yeah. some stuff yesterday. Just I like, saw that and it was beautiful. I just felt super inspired. I'm collecting yeah. all these little like leaves and acorn caps and little, you know, dried thistles and, and things and yeah. um, putting together these little collections. And now I'm like, so uh, my friend, Julia, who's in the UK, I'm like, so do you get yeah. any pottery shards? Like, can you, yeah. can you, do you have any little scraps of like old paper and stuff? Basically like, I just want your trash. Can you just like yeah. send me all of your garbage, <laughs> put it in a box and send it to the US. Oh, gosh. Um, but I'm really looking around like for little buttons and little bits of paper. So yeah. anyway, it's really good for me. This is not the kind yeah. of thing I would normally do. It's not the kind of work I would create. And I find myself yeah. like it, really excited about doing yeah. it and making the mess. And, and also yeah. I've, you know, ordered some fun supplies and everything. And of course that's like the best part of taking a class is getting right. to order some supplies. So, um, so anyway, I'm just sharing that class because I yeah. feel like, um, if you're kind of at that place where you're like, I'd really love to learn something new, like mm -hmm. pick a class that's maybe different yes. from the way you would normally create. Maybe it's not fully your style or your thing mm -hmm. and just, um, give it hey. a try, be a beginner. Yeah. yeah. Play around, see how, yeah. I, you know, what's funny is I was actually going to say like, and I forgot to tell you this, so it goes hand in hand, but like just a creative exercise is to do like what we did at the retreat, you know, take your phone out and just pile a table with just little bits and, you know, baubles and pretty things and, you know, and try to, um, you know, take a beautiful photo, you know, style, that was style to things see. together, pull things. It was such a fun, just creative exercise. You know, it just was, it was just a ton of fun. So it was fun to see people like you know, we're laying, doing like a flat lay on stairs and doing like just the different things yeah. they would gather. It was really interesting. Her name is Amy Bishop. So okay, I looked it up so it. that it was a B, but I was not right on the got rest it. of it. <laughs> so, yeah. But anyway, it's a great class. Um, Jean Oliver has a lot of great classes. I also love classes on um, Domestica, although you have to look and make sure they're in your language of choice. Cause I've taken a class that's in Spanish yeah. and it's really hard to watch what they're doing and read subtitles at the same time. So right. sort of struggling through that one, right. but that that's um, a great place. And um, Skillshare is another good one. Anyway, there are a lot of great places. A lot of places, classes. yeah. Renee Mueller offers really good classes too. I love her stuff. Um, yeah. she's one that really encourages that play and like yeah. letting kind of the magic happen and stuff. So it's always a little, like, it's, yeah. a, it's a little hard for me, but I love how people like that can kind of pull me out of what's comfortable and get me doing new things. So that's right. It's, yeah. it's good yep. to stretch. Yeah. So we have, um, actually in a couple of weeks, I think we're going to be talking to, to Liz Marie, uh, Galvan yes. about her creative process, which will be fun. Yes. And of course we've got some more topics coming up before we take a break for the holidays, which are upon us. That's right. Yeah. Gosh, so, they are. So which blows my mind. I know. I know. I I'm mean, putting up my tree next week, but not because yeah. that's like the normal time to put it up, but because I need to put it up for, um, yeah. some, uh, freelance work articles. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. So we yeah. hope that you will join us next time. Yes. Bye guys.